subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lesson from Rao's IA Study Circle. Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading from your UPSC perspective. Today, let us discuss the important news which has appeared in the New Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper dated 29th May 2020. The news to be discussed has been displayed on your screen and time stamping for the same has been provided in your description box below. So, on this note, let us start our today's discussion. Now, the first news to be discussed is with respect to the border dispute between India and China. Now, in this regard, this news has appeared on page number 1 as an article on page number 6 as well as page number 7. So let us discuss these important aspects which has been presented in the newspaper on these different pages. Now the news on page number 1 says that working with China to resolve LAC issue peacefully says Ministry of External Affairs. Countries engaged via diplomatic military channels and no traction for Trump's offer. So as you know that earlier the United States President Donald Trump had agreed to mediate between India and China with respect to solving their border dispute. So in this regard, India has declined the offer, saying that it is a bilateral issue between India and China. Now the article on page number 6 says, From a standoff to a stalemate, while the flare-up in the Ladakh is likely to be resolved peacefully, there may be increased deployments along the line of actual control on both sides. Further, this news on page number 7 says that Beijing's Ladakh brinkmanship, the India-China confrontation along the LAC, should not be seen as a stand-alone event as similar events has occurred in the past. So in this backdrop, let us discuss what these articles as well as this particular news has to say with respect to the ongoing India-China border disputes, especially in the Galwan Valley region. Now since India has declined United States offer to mediate between their bilateral issue, on this note, let us go through this particular question asked by UPSC in GS Paper 2 in the year 2019. The question was, what introduces friction into the ties between India and United States is that Washington is still unable to find for India a position in its global strategy which would satisfy India's national self-esteem and ambitions, explained with suitable examples. And this question carries 15 marks. Now, this question is very much unrelated with respect to the current issue of India and China border dispute. However, this question does reflect the importance of relationship between India and United States. Now coming back to the first news, the Ministry of External Affairs has said that both India and China are engaged at military as well as diplomatic levels peacefully at New Delhi, Beijing as well as on the line of actual control. And this peaceful engagement at the level of military and diplomatic levels is with respect to resolving the border dispute along boundaries in Ladakh as well as in Sikkim. So the government of India is trying to resolve the dispute peacefully so that they can settle their border dispute not only along Ladakh but also along Sikkim as Sikkim also shares its borders with China. So in this regard let us go through the highlights of Ministry of External Affairs with respect to this peaceful engagement at military and diplomatic levels. So, the Ministry of External Affairs is engaged at military and diplomatic level to solve the border dispute peacefully. Further, the Ministry of External Affairs highlighted that India did not accept US President offer to mediate between the two countries, that is between India and China. And the reason is that the issue is being discussed bilaterally between the two countries. So, as of now, both countries are trying to solve their border dispute bilaterally through a peaceful process. However, the Ministry of External Affairs did not give any detail of the nature or extent of standoff between India and China. Further, MEA also highlighted that the border issue will be resolved according to five agreements on border management which were signed by India as well as China between 1993 and 2013. And these agreements are confidence building measures on border with bilateral agreements signed in 1993, 1996. 2005, 2012 as well as 2013. So these are the five agreements signed on border management between India and China and they are trying to settle their border dispute as per these five agreements which has been agreed between India and China. Now these details of border agreements between India and China has been discussed in detail by Mangal Sir on 21st May 2020 
where he discussed about initiatives to resolve border issues between India and China. So to have a better understanding of initiatives to resolve border disputes between India and China starting from 1914 with respect to Shimla agreement, you can go through the DNS video dated 21st May 2020 as discussed in detail by Mangal sir. So in this regard, the Ministry of External Affairs stated that India is committed to the objective of maintenance of peace and tranquility in the border areas with China and our armed forces scrupulously follow the consensus reached by our leaders and guidance provided. However, at the same time, we remain firm in our resolve to ensure India's sovereignty and national security. So the statement basically highlights two aspects. First is that India is committed to maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas. That is, India will not transgress the LAC as agreed between India and China. However, at the same time, India remains firm in its resolve to ensure its sovereignty as well as national security. So, despite maintaining peace and tranquility in the border areas, the government will not compromise on India's sovereignty as well as national security. So, these can be said to be the highlights given by Ministry of External Affairs with respect to solving peacefully the border dispute between India and China based on confident building measures which has been agreed between the two countries in the year 1993, 96, 2005, 2012 as well as 2013 that is based on these five agreements. So after understanding the highlights issued by Ministry of External Affairs on peaceful settlement of border dispute between India and China, let us go through these two articles appearing on the same aspect. Now after going through the response of MEA, let us go through these two articles appearing on page number 6 as well as page number 7. Now this particular article appearing on page number 6 says from a standoff to a stalemate. This particular news highlights about previous India-China border clashes and how things would be in near future. Whereas this particular news appearing on page number 7 mentions about Beijing's Ladakh brinkmanship where it says that China's strategy of brinkmanship not only with India but also with other countries such as Taiwan, Hong Kong as well as its claim on South China Sea based on certain historical claims which is not agreed by the other party. So considering all these aspects as well as hegemony asserted by China, this article says that this strategy of brinkmanship of China along Ladakh border does have a larger global perspective and cannot be seen in isolation. Now, larger global perspective also comes with respect to the United States or the relation between United States and China on one hand, whereas relationship between US and India on other hand. So both these articles should be understood in a global scenario or in a global perspective, especially with respect to relationship of United States with India on one hand and with China on the other hand. So first of all, let us go through the previous border clashes with China and the perspective given by the author in this particular article. So according to the article on page number 6, it says that China is aware that if pushes India into a military conflict along its borders, then it will result in India leaning or tilting more towards the United States of America. And this might not be in the interest of China. Now, however, keeping this aspect aside, this article highlights that despite this, China has had a history of border conflicts with India in the recent parts. As the border dispute between India and China has not only occurred along the Ladakh border, but has also occurred along the Bhutan Tri Junction in the recently Doklam standoff, as well as along the Arunachal Pradesh. So given these border conflicts in the past, let us go through some of the important border conflicts between India as well as China. So some of these important border conflicts are the present Dalat Beg Oldie Road conflict in the Galwan Valley region, which also occurred in the year 2013. The conflict in Depsang in Ladakh in the year 2007. Chumar incursions in 2014, especially when the Chinese President Xi Jinping was on an official state visit to India. Next is the Doklam standoff at the Tri Junction on the Bhutan border in the year 2017. Lastly is the border dispute along Sam Chu in 1987 in Arunachal Pradesh. So these can be said to be some of the conflicts with India and China which has been highlighted in this particular article. So from the UPSC prelims perspective, all these locations becomes important from the perspective of geography. As questions may be asked about these places such as Depsang, Chumar, Doklam, Samdorong 
especially with respect to their concerned states or union territory. So in this regard, you must know about their strategic location as well as its bordering areas. So in this regard, this article says that China has had a history of changing boundary lines as per its certain historical claims. However, these historical claims are not agreed upon by India. It says that China has had history of changing lines, that is boundary lines. In the late 1950s, the lines kept moving westward, that is more towards, more into the Ladakh region and ultimately led to the 1962 war. In 2002, when maps were exchanged during the expert group meetings between the two countries, China showed a claim line in the western sector which was very different from what existed on the ground since 1962. So again we see that China has been moving westwards into the Ladakh region and it perceives any activity done by India on its own side with respect to infrastructural development as a threat to its sovereignty. So if India engages in any infrastructural development along its own border then China sees this infrastructural development as a threat. Now with respect to Dalat Beg Oldi Road, that road has been in construction for the last 15 years but it is very recently that China has said that any construction activity done by India amounted to unilaterally changing the boundary line. However, this is not true. So it is in this regard this article says that China has had a history of changing boundary lines based on its own historical claims which is not supported by India. Further the article says that again in 2007, China's perception of the borderline in Depsang in Ladakh sector, in Sikkim as well as in many other places appeared to change. So all these changing border lines or movement of China westwards towards India has created the border dispute between India as well as China. Now as you can see in both these maps, this is the Dalat Beg Oldi Road and it is very close to India-China border as you can see here. So in this regard, according to China, India was attempting to unilaterally change the status quo as India started construction of Dalat Beg Oldi Road in the Galwan Valley region. However, the article says that India has been constructing this road for the last 15 years for ease of access to the border areas for Indian troops. Further, if any dispute arises in the border regions, then as per protocol, the local commanders keep informing themselves, that is the local commander of India as well as the local commander of China. And this is as per the protocol. So it says that as per the protocol, local commanders kept informing each other about the construction activities. And China never raised any military objections earlier with respect to this construction of Dalat Beg Oldi Road by India on its own side. In fact, the article says that the construction were carried on by China on its side has been of a much higher scale and India never protested of such construction because China was carrying out their infrastructure constructions on their side and so was India. So according to the author, these current activities by China are mainly meant to put pressure on India as China is also asserting its hegemony on Hong Kong, Vietnam as well as over the entire South China Sea. So given in this pretext, China is putting pressure on India to showcase its military strength back home. So these are some of the aspects highlighted by the author with respect to construction of road to Dalat Beg Oldi in the Galwan Valley region. Further we also mentioned about Chumar or Chumur incursions. Now as you can see in this map the Chumur area lies in Ladakh and this is also very close to the India-China border. So this article says that in 2014 Chinese troops came close to Chumar near Ladakh and this occurred especially when President Xi Jinping visited India in 2014. So in this regard, you must know the location of Chumar or Chumur in the Ladakh region. It says that Chumur is the last village in the Ladakh area of Jammu and Kashmir bordering Himachal Pradesh. And Chumar has been a bone of contention between India and China as China has claimed Chumar to be its own territory. Now another area highlighted in this article is Sum Dorong Chu incident in Arunachal Pradesh. As it says that in 1987, a standoff between Indian as well as Chinese army took place in the Samdorong Chu area in Arunachal Pradesh. As you can see in this map, the Samdorong Chu area lies very close to the Arunachal China border. So it says, Samdorong Chu incident in 1987 in Arunachal Pradesh is one of the standoffs between Indian as well as Chinese army, where India and China came close to a war. However, Indian diplomacy mixed with 
caution and aggression not only avoided the war but also brought china to the negotiating table so from the perspective of geography you must know that samdorong chu area is in arunachal pradesh and it is close to india china border now another aspect highlighted in this article is with respect to problems with hotlines now this article says that whenever these kind of military incursions or disputes takes place generally the local commanders of india and china talks to each other with respect to these military incursions of or any military development taking place on either side of the border so this article says that as a rule cases of violation are resolved through a meeting of local commanders which may be arranged through a conversation on hotlines which is established for this particular purpose however this article highlights certain problems with respect to this hotlines it says that whenever a transgression is initiated by china often the chinese side does not answer the call on the hotline as has happened in this particular case that is in the case of dolat beg oldi road so whenever the chinese troops intend to barge in into the indian territory they do not respond to these hotlines that is their local commanders do not respond to these hotlines and in this regard it says that even during the 2013 standoff at despang in ladakh and in 2014 incident at chumar in ladakh which took place when president xi jinping was visiting in india the local chinese commander did not pick up the hotline so at times the chinese do not particularly pick up these hotlines or we can say that the chinese do not want to solve a particular border dispute at a given point of time so as a conclusion this article says that this standoff in ladakh presently with respect to dolat beg oldi road and in the galwan valley region is likely to be resolved peacefully given the conventional strength of both armies however the article says that this current crisis at dbo may see certain future impact such as increased permanent deployments by both sides along the lac and also further erosion of trust in agreements that both sides have built in the last few years as we have already seen that there have been five agreements signed between india and china with respect to solving the border disputes peacefully so considering the global trust deficit with china especially because of origination of covid-19 virus from wuhan as well as the future economic slowdown this brinkmanship by china must be seen in the larger global perspective so in this regard let us go through some of the important highlights as provided in this particular article appearing on page number 7 which says that india china confrontation along the lac should not be seen as a stand alone event So in this regard this article highlights that China is using brinkmanship as part of its policy. Now brinkmanship basically means that activity especially in politics of getting into a situation that could be very dangerous in order to frighten people and make them do what you want. It further says that activity especially in politics of trying to get what you want by saying that if you do not get it you will do something dangerous. So China is scaring other nations by using the policy of brinkmanship as it helps China in two ways. First is that it increases the nationalistic stance of China and increases the strength of China among its own people. Second, it acts as a diversion tactic considering the future economic slowdown which is about to come in China. So China as a part of its national policy is using military strength to scare other nations. and this scaring of other nations or using brinkmanship as its policy is part of a larger goal of china now one of the larger goal of china is to have a complete control over the asia pacific region however the problem is that the united states of america is also one of the important key stakeholder in the asia pacific region so we see a direct confrontation between china as well as united states in this region Now in this backdrop let us go back to the first article which we discussed today whereby we discussed about Ministry of External Affairs and its various highlights with respect to peaceful settlement of border dispute between India and China In one of the highlights of Ministry of External Affairs it was provided that India did not accept US President Donald Trump's offer to mediate between the two countries as the issue would be discussed bilaterally between India and China now it's important to understand that why india did not accept us offer of mediation between india as well as china to solve their boundary disputes so the question which arises is that what does us agreeing to mediate india china dispute actually shows with respect to geopolitics 
Now, the first and the most important aspect is that the United States has accepted that China is disturbing the balance in the Asia Pacific region as it is asserting its hegemony and also threatening other nations. Now, this in itself is a big achievement that United States has accepted this fact that China is disturbing the balance in the Asia Pacific region. Now, as you can see in this map, it highlights about the Asia Pacific region in yellow color and Indo Pacific region in red boundary. So, the border demarcated by yellow color is the Asia Pacific region, and the border demarcated in red color is the Indo Pacific region. And as you can see in this map, South China Sea is a part of Asia Pacific region. So, clearly, we understand that US also wants to play a key role with respect to maintaining the balance in the Asia Pacific region and that is why it has reached out to India in order to mediate the Indo-Chinese border dispute. However, India has declined the offer of United States. Now, India's decline of offer of United States shows that India does not want any third party interference in its bilateral relation. Now, this is very important to understand and this is also in the context of India-Pakistan ties as India does not want any third party mediation, especially with respect to the contentious Kashmir issue. Now, this is important because Pakistan always raises this issue in the United Nations that the issue of Kashmir should be mediated by a third party, and India always maintains that Kashmir is a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan, hence, does not want any third party with respect to its bilateral relationship. So it is in this context that India has declined the offer of United States with respect to mediating between India and China to solve their border dispute. Now another reason why India has declined the offer of US is that, that India believes in the concept of multi-alignment and this is not what the US wants. Now US wants strong ties or alignment with India as part of its strategy whereas India as part of its strategy believes in multi-alignment because India believes in the concept of Asian century where it wants all the Asian giants to cooperate with each other in the 21st century. Thus, the offer of United States to mediate between India and China has a global perspective which you must understand and India has refused this offer because India believes in solving its issues through bilateral relations. Now let us understand this difference of opinion in terms of geopolitics of different countries through the example of Quad. Now you know that under Quad there are four countries, the United States, India, Japan as well as Australia. Now for the United States, Quad is a strategic alliance or alliance of democracies and it is against aggression or against countries which are authoritarian in nature. Whereas India considers Quad as an economic alliance as India foresees multi-alignment as well as an Asian 21st century. Whereas for Japan, Quad is a military alliance. So we see a difference of opinion with respect to the Quad group which includes United States, India, Japan and Australia. So overall we can say that United States agreeing to mediate between India and China shows a deteriorating relationship between US and China because for United States, a rising China is a greater threat than a rising Russia. So all these geopolitics becomes important to understand the moment US tried to mediate the Indo-China dispute. Now another important aspect highlighted in the article is with respect to South China Sea. So with respect to South China Sea, so far China has not triggered a serious confrontation with the United States. However, a recent and more provocative strategy by China, especially its assertion on Hong Kong, Taiwan and also Philippines may run the risk of antagonizing United States. So US wants to prevent China's complete dominance or complete control in the entire region of South China Sea. As this area has navigational significance and also economic significance. So considering these two aspects of navigational significance that is freedom to move around in the area and economic significance becomes important for United States to become a key stakeholder in the South China Sea conflict. So removal of United States presence in the South China Sea will definitely alter the power balance especially with respect to China 
within the Asia Pacific region. So these are the aspects which have been highlighted in this article. So it is in this context the author has said that the brinkmanship with Ladakh should not be seen as an isolated event but should be seen as a part of global strategy of China and it is here where United States also comes into the picture. Thus these three articles becomes very important to understand not only the relation between India and China on one hand but also the relation between US, China as well as India in a comprehensive manner especially given the present circumstances of dispute in the Ladakh region as well as dispute in the South China Sea. Now after understanding the involvement of United States let us again go back through this particular question asked by UPSC in 2019. The question is what introduces friction into the ties between India and US is that Washington is still unable to find for India a position in its global strategy which would satisfy India's national self-esteem and ambitions. Explain with suitable examples. So in the global context bilateral relation between India and China India and United States as well as United States and China becomes very important and significant from our examination perspective. So from your prelims perspective this topic get covered under current events of international importance and from your mains it gets covered under GS paper 2 specifically with respect to India and its neighborhood relations, bilateral agreements involving India or affecting India's interest and effect of policies and politics of developed and developing countries on India's interest. So these three articles in a combined way becomes very important to understand the comprehensive issues between India, China as well as United States. The next news to be discussed appears on page number 6. It says for a reset in India-Nepal relations. The urgent need today is to pause the rhetoric on territorial nationalism and lay the groundwork for a quiet dialogue. Now this article highlights the deteriorating relationship between India and Nepal and this time the relationship has deteriorated because of long-standing complex territorial issue especially with respect to Kalapani area. Now earlier as such there were no territorial border dispute between India and Nepal. However the local electoral politics of Nepal has increased the bilateral tensions between India as well as Nepal to serve their own nationalistic purpose. As the Nepal Communist Party has come to power in Nepal on ultra nationalistic issues and has painted India as a hegemon or as a usurper. So it is in this context that the author says that relationship between India and Nepal needs a fundamental reset. Now here you must understand that neighborhood first is the policy which is being pursued since independence and regarding this Nepal has drifted away from India towards China and this is one of the biggest geopolitical challenge for India especially in its neighborhood area. Further the ultra nationalist of Nepal accuses India of a colonial mindset and says that India treats Nepal as a landlocked state rather India should treat Nepal as a land linked state. So in this backdrop first of all let us understand certain issues which has created the divergence between India and Nepal in the recent past. Now the first problem as already highlighted is with respect to drifting away of Nepal towards China and this is one of the biggest challenge with respect to India's neighborhood first policy. The second aspect is that China had earlier proposed 2 plus 1 mechanism with India. Now as for the 2 plus 1 mechanism when India and China held their bilateral dialogue then they should be accompanied by any other regional country such as Nepal or any other Sark nation. Now by proposing this China intended to enter into the Sark arena. However India did not support the 2 plus 1 mechanism as proposed by China. However Nepal readily agreed for this particular mechanism knowing it well that this will bring China much closer within the Sark arena. Thus acceptance of 2 plus 1 mechanism by Nepal also brought the tensions between India and Nepal at the forefront. Further as already mentioned the ultra nationalist of Nepal accuses India of a colonial mindset as this serves their local politics. Now another area of concern is that Nepal joined the Belt and Road Initiative of China 
which was earlier referred as one belt one road initiative and this gave china access to nepal now china through bri started increasing its soft power and opened school and started teaching mandarin to the nepalese children further china started building up infrastructure especially to consolidate its tibet area so these infrastructural development in nepal by china also antagonized india further nepal also refused to participate in military exercise conducted by bimstech and rather went for bilateral military exercise with china further the ultra nationalist party of nepal proposes changes in indo nepal friendship treaty however india does not agree with the same and madheshi issue further escalated the tension between india and nepal as india always prefers madheshi in the power game in nepal because if madheshis are in the power game in nepal then it will always be beneficial for india so these can be said to be some of the reasons with respect to the growing divergence between india and nepal so after understanding the backdrop with respect to growing divergence between india and nepal let us go through what has been proposed in this particular article especially with respect to the border dispute along the kalapani area now as you can see in this map this is india this is nepal and this is china now this is the kalapani area as has been mentioned in this newspaper this is lipu lake and this is the area between kalapani as well as lipu lake and this is limpia dhura which we will see in our upcoming discussion so let us go through some of the important highlights with respect to map of india and nepal now the india nepal boundary is as per the treaty of sagoli of 1816 now this becomes an important point from your prelims perspective and according to the treaty kali river separated india and nepal so the dispute with respect to india and nepal is about origin of river kali now here are certain aspects with respect to shifting of this origin of river kali earlier it was considered a north west stream of river kali from limpia dhura as per the old british maps however later the origin of kali river shifted from north west to north east streams and these north east streams were just below the kalapani area and was accepted by both nepal and india and this became the map after india received its independence in 1947 so the stream kuti yangti which was the north western stream from limpia dhura was the origin of kali river as per the old british maps however the map shifted from north western streams to north eastern streams that is from kuti yangti stream it changed to lipugad in 1857 and then to pankhagad in 1879 and this change of stream as origin of river kali was accepted by both india and nepal from north west to north east so you must remember the limpia dhura area from where the original kuti yangti stream originated which was considered at the origin of river kali and this was as per the old british maps so this picture says that the east bank of kali river below limpia dhura which is around 335 square kilometer which is supposed to be in nepal as per the treaty of sagoli of 1816 so till 1947 there was no problem with respect to origin of river kali now let's see what happened later Now in the year 1953 India and China identified Lipu Lake Pass as an area for pilgrim and border and also for trade and this pass was an open border area However 1962 war between India and China stopped pilgrimage through the Lipu Lake Pass However the pilgrimage resumed in 1981 and border trade resumed in 1991 that is 10 years after the pilgrimage resumed however the base camp for lipu lake remained at kalapani so both india and nepal showed kalapani as the origin of kali river as part of their territory now it's important to note that after 1979 indo tibetan border police that is itbp has manned the lipu lake pass 
Now the origin of river Kali for the first time was raised in the year 1997. So once this matter was raised, it was then referred to the Joint Technical Level Boundary Committee, which had been set up earlier in 1981 to re-identify and replace the old and damaged boundary pillars along India-Nepal border. Now this committee clarified that 98% of the boundary were fine. However, it left behind certain unresolved issues of Kala Pani and Sasta in the Terai region. Further, this committee got dissolved in the year 2008. So, after this committee got dissolved, it was subsequently agreed that matter would be discussed at foreign secretary level. That is the unresolved issues of Kala Pani and Sasta. Meanwhile, the project to convert 80 km track from Ghati Baga to Lipu Lake into a hard top road began in 2009. However, then Nepal did not raise any objection. Now let's come to 2nd November 2019. Now what happened here was the government of India issued the new map creating the two union territories of Ladakh as well as Jammu and Kashmir. Now once this map was issued by the government of India, Nepal registered its protest even though the map did not change any area under Nepal. However, the government issued a new map on 9th November 2019, deleting river Kali and this led to strong protest from Nepal. And this in a way also gave lifeline to politics of the present Prime Minister of Nepal. So this strong protest by Nepal also invoked foreign secretary level talks in order to resolve the border dispute. Now let us go through what happened slowly after this particular issue was raised by Nepal once India issued its new map creating the two union territories of Jammu and Kashmir as well as Ladakh. Now all these events took a U-turn in Nepalese politics and this led to increase in nationalistic politics in Nepal that too against India. Now it's interesting to note that Prime Minister K.P. Oli had a two-year moratorium as according to the Nepal's constitution, no confidence motion could not be moved up to two years from assuming office and this two year ended in February 2020. Now the important point to be understood here is that there were many resentments against the Prime Minister of Nepal, K.P. Oli in the local domestic politics of Nepal. So. Prime Minister K.P. Oli saw this as an opportune moment to raise nationalistic demands for Nepal in his own favour. And in this regard, the inauguration of 80 km long road by India's Defence Minister from Ghati Gubagar to Lipu Lake further re-erupted the Kala Pani issue. And this gave the opportunity to the Prime Minister of Nepal to raise anti-India sentiments in Nepal on which he had won election. Now here it's important to note that the old map of Nepal which was based on older British survey that is origin of river Kali from Limpia Dhura was considered by Nepal. So based on this older British survey map Kali river originating from Limpia Dhura was adopted by Nepal's parliament on 20th May 2020. Further this was added through Nepal's constitutional amendment on 22nd May 2020, thereby adding 335 square kilometer into Nepalese territory. Now this extra territory never reflected in Nepal's map in the last 170 years. So this is the area of contention between India and Nepal, especially with respect to the 335 square kilometer area from Limpia Dura to Kalapani. So the question remains that what prompted Nepal to go against its historical friend that is India. Now one of the most important reason is China. Now Nepal Communist Party has come into power on nationalistic sentiments basically against India as it sees India less as a bigger brother and more as an intruder. Further China has given Nepal leverage to pursue their belligerent policy with India and Nepal is an essential element in China's growing South Asian footprint. So in a way China indirectly prompted Nepal to go against India. 
so the question remains that what has india done knowing it very well that nepal would go against india if china agrees to help nepal in certain way now here the article says that indian government got too comfortable with the past events and did not foresee turning political events in kathmandu especially with the nepal communist party and government of india ignored the political environment which was changing in nepal and which was being done at china's behest further the special relationship which india had with nepal was seen in a negative way in nepal and this special relationship was with respect to shared culture language as well as religion however this special relationship was seen more as an intrusive and bullying way by nepal's power corridor and in this regard even the treaty of peace and friendship of 1950 was seen by certain section of nepal political power as unequal relationship and also as india's imposition of its policies on nepal so considering all these aspect the article further concludes that india's foreign policy of neighborhood first needs a serious thinking and makeover and this must be done by addressing the larger concerns of its immediate neighborhood including nepal so this can be said to be the entire summary now this topic becomes important both from the perspective of prelims as well as mains examination from your prelims this gets covered under current events of international importance and also from the perspective of indian geography as question on locations of lipu lake kali river etc can be asked and from your mains perspective it gets covered under international relations especially with respect to india and its neighborhood relations so while going through this article you must understand the backdrop of the present problem especially with respect to india and nepal in the recent past few years now the next three news appears as an editorial on page number 6 saying export blocks india must not miss out on the rise in world trade on the back of stimulus packages this news appearing on page number 11 talks about scrapping of rbi bonds a blow to people and this news talks about increase in fdi on page number 15 it says fdi rises 13% to 50 billion dollars highest inflow into the services singapore is a top source nation in financial year 2020 now the explanation of these articles has been provided in the pdf of today so to understand these articles you can go through the pdf of today now after our discussion this forms your question for the day the question is match the following pairs first debsang himachal pradesh second somdorong chu arunachal pradesh third chumar ladakh so the question is select the correct answer using the code given below options are a 1 and 2 only b 1 and 3 only c 2 and 3 only and d 1 2 and 3 now coming to the answer of yesterday the question was charu musal sometimes seen in news refers to which of the following in this the correct answer is b that is it is an invasive species